Okay, welcome to Nested Loops. Um, the book we're doing today, or starting today, is uh, Badass Making Users Awesome. As uh, some guys on the team know, a um, little background. So Kathy Sierra was a, was, is notable figure in that she came up with the Head First series for O'Reilly, which is really this, um, her trying to take an, an engaging way of teaching you know, these were all tech books, but it, it doesn't have to be necessarily tech topics. So uh, for those of you who read in, in the current book, you know, pictures, questions, um, she, she leverages strongly, you know, the emotions you get from certain pictures and all that is designed to make it, um, I think, more engaging, more memorable. And, and of course, her blog from the 90s, 90s, mid mid late 90s uh creating passionate users pretty much the same thing here making your users awesome she was really uh you know in that internet i guess that was like the second internet boom and all these startups and and whatnot and what makes a startup better you know and and ultimately that's the gist of this book here so um I have the, the prologue. I start off the book. Um, give it all the time I took preparing. Hopefully it won't be a five minute thing. Um, but it feels to me that the pace of this book might be about half a chapter at a time. Probably culminating at an exercise. So I'm going to go share my uh, screen and we'll get started. Go. Yes, I'm going to try to adjust this so that this maximizes the screen. Oh, that's right, because I have a wide screen. Does that look good? Is that, I guess it doesn't change the text no matter how wide it is. Yeah, it's not changing too much. Okay. So we start this off with the challenge. Oops, no, I'm sorry. Boom. Right, so... The boss comes to you and he says, you must make a bestseller product or else. Right? So but we have a couple constraints here. Starting with that one, we have a low to no marketing budget. So, you know. But to have this bestseller, we also cannot make it the lowest price, i.e. it has to be a sustainable success, uh, you know. And we kind of know that a lot of the... Uh, Silicon Valley things are like burn money until someone buys this kind of thing and um, we don't want to do it that way you know kind of the anti uber anti rework kind of uh, thing much more of much more of a DH DHH was always very much into Kathy Sierra uh, and you can understand this guy because we want to have a good business model so where should we stop what questions should we ask ourselves in preparation for this so the first question that uh, Kathy suggests is, why are some products more successful than others? Right, what makes these different? It's not the price. So then it must be something that these products or services are doing. Something they are or something they have. Um, you know, what's the common thing? Is it luck? I think luck always, uh, you know, luck always matters. Uh, but you kind of want to shrink the role of luck for this one here. So the best product, is it quality? So uh, again, uh, Kathy likes a lot of these little simple charts to, to make her point is, you know, is this true? As quality increases, is the product more desirable? I think as engineers, we tend to think that's the case, um, uh, but not really. I mean, not necessarily, but let's, let's say that is the case. If quality inc increases desirability, then who defines quality or best? What is the best thing for you know, our user in this situation? The problem with this approach is that, uh, you know, too many examples where the best product is not the best seller. Uh, anyone have any examples? What's, what comes to my mind is like back in the day, beta versus VHS. Beta was the superior quality. Um, 
VH won, won out, but I think eventually it, it, it won out with longer times, but it's definitely lower quality. So it's not the best product, it's always the best seller. I think um, back in the day when, when MySpace was the best, um, not the best, yeah, the, the most popular, it wasn't the best, but it was the first. And eventually uh, Facebook took that over. So. All right, so here's another chart. Kind of puts the other way. So we have a little chart, desirability, amount of crap we'll put up with. So if users really like something, they can put up with a certain amount of crap. Flaws, problems, excessive cost. You know, quality can drive desirability, uh, but desirability can drive perceived quality. And um, I thought I put the bullet down that, um, I thought I put the bullet here for, like the Apple Halo is kind of that, where people will put up with all kinds of crap because supposedly the Apple is better. So, um, you know, and you know, you always see people make excuses for, oh, blah, 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 look, Apple introduced a white phone. Oh my God, it's incredible. It's like, it's a white phone. All right, so also true. It's a variation of the um, the previous chart there. Amount of crap well reinterpret is not crap. It's, it's the same kind of thing. We reframe problems, not problems. It's a feature, you know. And again, I think Apple is a good example of how people, uh, which, which I find now because Apple finally decided after years of keyboards that everyone despises that the new 16 inch is going to go back to the older design and bring in back the escape button. So, I hope you can. Hey, uh, Forrest, um, Diego wants to know if you can zoom in. Um, he says yeah. his eyes are getting gold. He has to squint. They are, oh, you know what? Let me, let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah. How's that? Does that help you? Yeah. It's hard to see the words on the chart. I can definitely see the arrow keys now. <laughs> I guess not. So I keep zooming, but the picture doesn't get any bigger. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Yes. This is this is why you have that big TV. That's right. All right. So the more we love something, the more we interpret not as problems. And again, um, I think we all see. This, this applies to even relationships. Well, you know, he's a crappy boyfriend, but he's my boyfriend, so, you know, kind of deal. Okay. What? No, we're not good. You already own it. assign more value to it. Yeah. So, okay. So this is where I put that bullet, uh, Apple Taylor effect. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, product or service love is nearly blind. And, and there was a picture I chose not to, to paste that one in. Um, quality doesn't guarantee desirability, right? So that's one of these things. Uh, you know, as engineers, we look for these easy correlations. Hey, this is higher quality, therefore more people will buy. And unfortunately, that's not uh, what people do. So what about marketing? Just because you don't have a budget for marketing doesn't mean you're not, you're not doing marketing. So if again, uh, if we go back and we look at uh, common attributes for success in various products, it's not the marketing that distinguishes it. And uh, as an example, Kathy brought up Windows 8 as something that was highly marketed with lots of money and, and, it, and the product itself did not succeed. Um, and if anyone has another example, that would be good. But I, I oh, actually, I would say, you know, Terminator Dark Fate, which I've been showing my kids Terminator movies so that we can go see. It's not doing well, and, and I like the commercials, but apparently Woke is broke, so. Um, and of course, I don't know that you can really empower users for a movie, but um, anyways. All right, so, and, and again, this is a very Kathy Sierra thing, the face, the words here. What do social media consultants say? And so, it's the attention economy, one word, viral video. Oh, it's the attention economy. If your brand's not on Facebook, you don't exist. 
actually it's a sharing economy influencers it's all about influencers so if you i don't know how many people actually look at social media influencing and that sort of stuff but you know influences and pinfluencers your pinterest plan you know so these are stuff that uh, even though that this book is a few years old um this stuff is uh, very true it's like if you ever on YouTube seeing guys talk about influencing it's still there Twitter duh, YouTube tastemakers content strategy social mobile uh, gamification it's the app economy don't outspend the competition just outfriend and outtrend them so that's your your final thing here and um, for whatever reason in a while I was definitely looking at a lot of videos on like you know how to have a successful YouTube channel or social media stuff and um, these are definitely all sorts of things that I read is, you know, you have to do these things to be successful. Um, all right. Oh, sorry. A little glitch there. Boom. All right. So, the commonality we have for bestsellers is this. I use this app for all my products. It's amazing. Seriously, I need to get that right it's recommendations you know when someone's saying this it's something they love they could not do without right and so um and recommendations can be in different forms like in the picture here it could be in person it could be reading a blog post uh discussions tweets misspelled there etc um and this makes a difference and i realize i think i have a bullet below this that you cannot read um uh check back my original slide and search if yeah I had another I had another bullet below that one honest word of mouth product not marketing um, so um, and this Facebook edge and Google I'll talk about next session uh, but but pretty much here when we're talking about it's not marketing or viral video like the things on the previous page have a viral video have a cat have a blah 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 there's um you can get attention, people have little contests, you know, various things that, that bring attention, you know, and there is that saying in advertising, you know, any attention is good attention. Um, but I think the difference here is, is these recommendations, you know, be a word of mouth. Um, here's stat that she has said here, 92% say they trust recommendation from friends and family above all forms of advertisement. And I think this is true. If you know, um, if you got someone that you like, know, or you trust their opinion, you tend to, to go with their word versus, you know, <coughs> I know the Facebook page. Seventy percent say they trust online consumer reviews. The second most uh, trusted recommendation above all forms of advertising. So these are the top two. Um, what we want are true trusted recommendations. Uh, faced or bought? Did I must have miscopied that one. Placed or caught? Um, anyways, we, you know, I think a lot of us are aware of, you know, like uh, bought reviews. So I think people are aware, even on Amazon, hey, you know, here it's got a lot of reviews, but they kind of look like bots or one guy from Indonesia. So. Um, we also don't see the brand as our friend. That's kind of the social media advice. Hey, we're your friend. We're your brand. Let's be all chummy. You know, we want the recommendations from people we trust. Um, and then even with all that, Amazon review is greater than a brand that I like. So again, these little media tricks, we tend not to trust as much as the reviews. Uh, but again, sometimes we're suspicious of the Amazon reviews. So. The real question is, if recommendations um, are what make the product uh, successful, then what inspires the recommendations? All right, so here's our pop quiz. And it's another thing, God, did I put words underneath that? Uh, I need to check. Okay, fortunately I did not. All right, so here's the pop quiz. A, B, or C. What is the thing that we want the most? We want people to say this product is awesome or B this company is awesome or C this brand is awesome all right answers I think C 
Okay. Anyone else want to venture? Um, yeah, I'm between, I want to say A, but I'm between A or C. Like, if you like the brand stands for, then probably going to like the product. But then if you get hooked on a brand based on a product, then the product is more C. I go with C. Okay. So we have pretty much everything. All right. Well, the answer is trick question. I'm awesome. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> right, and then uh, the bullets here. It's not the product, the company, the brand. It is how they feel about themselves in the context of the product. Right. So, and this brings us to the title. I'm awesome because of this. This is the feeling behind the words that this is awesome. So, the title of the book is Making Users Awesome. And uh, and I think, you know, in the previous um, study groups, we have talked about, well, I always, I always bring up uh, Keynote versus PowerPoint, where... I remember the first time I used it and I put together this really good looking presentation using the, the, the keynote templates and you just feel good about yourself. It's like, God, I made a great presentation. Then even better, if that success, if that presentation did well, and it's, you know, then it's like, it's not just even the product. It's like, I, I really, you know, uh, won it. I really like won the company meeting because of my great presentation because keynote is awesome. But ultimately, I'm awesome. Or actually, more importantly, Keynote made me awesome. And that's why you have to use Keynote. Okay, so uh, what do users say on the left? This product is amazing. You should see what it does. What it means is I am amazing. You should see what I can do with it. So this, again, sums up in a little pseudo cartoon what I was just saying before there. Uh, you want people to to have that kind of recommendation. You really have to have this. You've got to try this coffee. You've got to play this guitar. I, you know, you've got to drive this car, you know. Um, behind the recommendation is a feeling of what it enabled. Okay, so that means most companies looking in the wrong place. The key attributes of success don't live in the product itself, but rather they live in the users. So what is in common about successful users of successful products? So anyone want to guess before we hit the next slide? No. Yeah, awesome. yeah something like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the awesome product is a side effect. This is what we think. So this is what everyone thinks at the top here. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. This is the lady, you know, the glow, the magic product. But what's actually true is, you know, this conversation. I can't believe you did this with this one app. You're amazing. So again, the app is amazing, but the user experience is perceived of, we push it past just the app is amazing. Oh, you did this via said amazing app. So users don't bask in the glow of our awesome product. Do I have another bullet? I gotta make sure I didn't cut off bullets with my pictures here. Oh, what's in common? Successful, awesome. Okay, no, so now, so then we're up into the exercise. So if we wanna write, uh, and this is the exercise we all do, um, what is your ideal Amazon review? So it's not a marketing exercise on review or testimonials to drive sales, right? So again, the first thing, the first two is what people expect, what often what companies pay users to try to do or, you know, and, and, and we're always looking for those good testimonials. It's about reviews that reflect what we hope our users will think and feel. So what is, um, we could possibly, um, yeah, do the exercise without thinking about how good the review makes your product look. So again, that's, I think, the... Uh, that's the approach people, you know, it's, 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 it's some, sort of the thing where, you know, so-and-so just said what the boss wanted to hear, kind of things. Like, we're, you know, we want to hear like, oh, how does it make the product look good to others? Right, so, everyone sitting, I, I know. I don't know if we want to pick the same product or do different products. I don't know if it matters. Everyone just come up with, a, we'll take a few minutes here to come up with reviews. We'll go around and discuss uh, why we think certain reviews are good. Um, so I don't know if you actually want to write it down. You can just think it. Uh, but 
from the previous slides, we do the exercise. What is your ideal review? Okay. Um, so I thought about this and then I forgot what I was going to say. What if people review my Facebook? What if I'm the product? All right, so I, I'll, I'll give it a stab. I'll, I will take um, Garage Band. That is on our thing. I know I'd say, you know, the speed that with which I was able to get up to speed in GarageBand was great, and I was able to record my song without hitting the manual. And I know I'll be able to do much more stuff as the time goes along. So I don't know if that's the ideal review. But that's again. So I really recommend that you get it. But of course, if you get a Mac, it comes with a Mac. So obviously, people who don't have Mac have to buy a Mac, and then it becomes really expensive. But um, so something like that. So that's my review, and I try to do it with the look of how it empowered me to be successful in the test that it's for. So I could talk about. The, I still talk about the app some, but I say, hey, I got speed quick. I can do so much more, which is so easy and sounded really good you know and that kind of makes me there's probably a way to say more like how awesome i am as a recording person but um i think something like that one that's kind of it does talk about the product some but hopefully it emphasizes more how successful i was all right who's next i'll talk about emacs okay um so, I don't know, I didn't really put it into a review form, but uh, one thing that made me feel awesome was that in one of my classes I was writing up notes and I was using org mode and I was quickly going from source code to really nice output really quickly, really simply, without any issues. And people were like, whoa, how'd you do that? And I was like, Zmax. And uh, I felt really empowered because Zmax made me feel Really cool. I, like I, I think that's actually a really good example. But but, but again, like org org mode is is one of those things that uh, is really empowering if you can learn some fraction of the skill, you know, you know, and, and given the the crazy religious wars, you know, ridiculous religious wars there are, you know, with editors. The fact that then people have written several versions to try to duplicate some of that sort of shows, wow, well, we despise Emacs, but we must steal this thing because of what it empowers, because of the power. It transcends the, the, the blind religion hate, you know, but it's the kind of thing you go, look, I did this. This is so easy. Yeah, no, no, I agree. That's good. All right. Who's next? I took more of a generic approach of just incredible. It helps me with everything I need. I've never seen anything like it before. My friends are all amazed at how they all want one. Okay. Kind of like spreading the word. Yeah. So it's like it, it, it fulfilled all of what they wanted, but they're also spreading the word to their friends. Mm -hmm. So I think the part, I mean, if, if, if I'm reading her chapter right, your last sentence is the, is the real sale. Right where the rest is the product. It's tough, uh, you know, I think it's tough to not talk about the product. And, and maybe that's our conditioning. We're always, con we're preconditioned to talk about how great the product is and not what she's trying to do here and actually 
focus on the human part of how the human is better instead of the product being better. All right, we turn the screen. That means Alexis is talking, right? Oh, no, I found a, I was looking for an a old review that I made for a pencil sharpener, but I can't find it. Um, but I accidentally found Diego uh, face uh, for the first nest of loops session. Oh. <laughs> oh. Just reminiscent. All right, who's next? Next, next, next. Do the exercises. So, so the key, the, the key really, I think, in learning whether you do the Kathy Sierra way or not is do the exercise. If you do a code book, if you actually do the code stuff, you'll be good. I had a coworker who uh, at BA Systems and he, he really drove our virtualization system there and, and everyone uh, pretty well regarded, pretty bright guy. And I was talking to him. I said, you know what I do the different than most people is I'll go through the book and I'll do all the exercises. And that's, you know, how he, you know, he, how he, he paved his, uh, his expertise. And it's true. People will buy a book, they'll glance through a couple, they won't do it, and they never get skill. Right? The person that goes through the thing and does them all is almost by default, like, you know, top 5%. Everyone who doesn't do it, they just don't get any better, you know. And um, it is sort of side when I'm telling people to learn Rails. I said, you know, you go through the go through a good Rails book like three times, and then if you've got that, you have it. You know, very few people will do it, and that's why most people aren't that good at Rails. They don't bother to learn stuff. Um, so, the exercise. All right, who's next? Anyone? Do the exercises. Peer pressure. Um, I'll go next. Yes. So um, I tried out this app called Things Three. Um, um, phase three app made my daily task management so much easier, saves me a bunch of time and time, and I feel like I can focus my efforts on my important work. It's simple to use and organizes my goals, task lists, and even gives me progress bars on projects. I think it can help a lot of people out there struggling with keeping their projects and to do all together. So it's like a, uh, it emphasizes like the features and like the problems you can have and like gives solutions. Like, um, specific examples like with the features of the product mm -hmm. it's just yeah highlighting what what will make your life possible yes okay cool I, I, well what i'm hoping that later uh actually because i know with i know the exercise after this has to do with um, what makes people badass i kind of was hoping that she would have given us a, a good review which Oh, she didn't give an example? No. Um, like, I want to know. It's like, all, all of our things, while we emphasized how we are better, we definitely talk a lot about the product. So I kind of was hoping she'd give an example. Here's something that, like, look how awesome I am, small mention to product. I, I, I think our tend to be product, awesome, product, awesome, product, awesome. I did good stuff with it. So... All right. I think we're down to the last few. Diego, what's your review? Um, what, what, what's your cool guitar gizmo? Uh, I was going to go with thinking. Like my review is about thinking. It's about thinking. Uh, but like, you know, ever since I, said, I, I tried thinking, it's, like, it's, it's really revolutionized my, uh, my life. So every aspect of my life got, got better. That's great. All your friends are like, "Oh, Diego, how'd yeah, you do it?" I do it. I thought about it. There you go. So everyone should think because well, we know it. we we know in this political environment that's not true. No, no, but you should try. Try thinking. Should try thinking. Hi. Right, anything, uh, Brett? You got anything for us? There is such thing as thinking too much. In some some languages, it translates as not the best thing. Um, okay. Uh, honestly, I, I could take about uh, ten hours to write this simple review, um, but but I but I wait wait. Uh, these wireless phone chargers are the best. I never forget it because it stays in one place. I never have to worry about running out of battery. I'm always able to answer my emails. Honestly, not an ideal review though. So yeah, I, I kind of like that. 
I, I like I like how the, the, the features are directly tied to your better outcome. Right. So I would say of the bunch and again without the Kathy Sear example, I don't know, but it's it's at least parity featured equality. Like I think even in mine I had to talk about easy before I got to actually recording. It's easy to use, which is fine, but be, because I had to record, you know, and, and uh, so I thought the parody is pretty good. All right, Rob, are we going to talk? Oh, we have someone new here. Rob is a friend of mine. Uh, I thought looking at empowering users would be useful. I don't even know if he's close by his phone or computer to actually click unmute. Um, Rob, are you there? Are you answering? Are you alive? Maybe driving. Oh, I got a text. He's answering by text. He's here. Are you talking? By text. I got. I, I, all right. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. <laughs> He says, say hi to everyone. Okay. Uh, if you text me a review, I'll read it. But I got to say this. Unfortunately to him, he had a relatively new MacBook that got stolen when he was in Europe. So he's probably using some crap PC of his mother's or something. Yes, move on. All right. Um, all right. So what do we bring? Oh, I am wrong. I'm sorry. She did have an exam. I don't know what I was thinking. All right. Uh, wonderful product. I love it. This is an excellent product. Easy to use yet powerful. Looks like it will last forever. You won't regret this feature. Looks good, but reads like a brochure. Mostly about the product. Amazing. Works perfectly. These instructions were a little weak, but I was able to set myself up in less than five minutes. I already made ex amazing products with it within three weeks. You won't regret this purchase. Much better. Review talks about herself and her results. So I think then we did pretty good jobs. And apparently between Friday and now, I forgot that I had this slide. So um, so then I think then we were all in, on, on the kind of right boat. Um, so actually, when I look at this one, she does, doesn't really talk about the product except for weak instructions, but made, made progress. So, I don't know if that's the clue. All right. So what we want is to build something that inspires users to talk about themselves. So again, kind of like the last one with no interface where um, Golden was trying to point us not where everyone else is looking. Kathy's trying to do the same thing here. Build something that inspires users to talk about themselves and not the product. Okay, so let's look at user goals versus company goals. So the brand goal on the left, you know, our little Venn diagram, be perceived as awesome. And the user goal is to be awesome. And so you can see the overlap there is that small overlap in the middle. So we want to move from that on the left to where the overlapping goals are larger. So you can see now in the second Venn diagram here, we now have uh, much more overlap. So, and the, and the uh, subtitle there is, if the answer doesn't live in the product, but the, success, the successful user, what are the common attributes of the successful user? All right, so we'll look at successful users. So we have uh, read around the circle, remove, remain loyal, evangelize, telling, convincing others, show off their results, appreciate the value need for higher end advanced versions. Again, uh, power user per se get accessories add on t-shirts pride items seek out uh, form communities of other users resist the competition tolerate problems all right so what is the missing core ingredient there anyone got an idea overall satisfaction all right her answer badass users per the book so the key 
Because the users themselves are, are awesome. Well, I mean, the product is awesome and make them awesome, but you know, it is the users that make it. But what are these badass users? They tend to be smarter, more skillful, more powerful, the power users. You know, they know more, they can do more. Um, and I thought this line was really key. They evangelize the product, not because they like the product, because they like their friends. Right. I share with you, hey, I like you and I want you to do better, so you should use this thing that I'm doing that makes me better. Right? It's a, you know, share because you care. I just, I don't know if anyone else used that one, I, but it, I just came up with it in rhymes, and I may have independently rediscovered it. Share because you care. <laughs> right? And so, um, that they should also like the product to be able to recommend it to other friends. Well, I, they do. I mean, it's not that they don't like it, <laughs> right? But again, the, our, you know, the traditional oh, marketing it, focus they, is yeah, right. Is mark product product. The the product can't suck because then it doesn't empower the the badass user. Right. The motive is to also want the same thing for your friends. Right, you know, the also has to be good. <laughs> right. So, so we we can sort of well, you know, it can't suck because I'm not empowered. And then because you care about your friend, you don't say, "Hey, use this sucky product." Unless it's like superficial or something, uh, like the look, the color. You don't really care about the color or the look, but it works really well. Yeah, but um, but that's one of those. So, so I think I think it's a default. The product can't suck. But again, the focus is. How do we empower the users to take advantage of that one? So, and, and this gets her to the thing. So it's easier to compre compute on user awesomeness than product awesomeness. And this, I think I cut and paste this directly. Com competing on the quality of product, not the quality of the users with the product. So this is what most people are doing. I'm going to make a better thing. You know, it's kind of like Microsoft Word and they keep adding new features. It's like, stop, I don't use those features. But there's pay, paying people there because they're trying to figure out, well, how are we going to get them to buy you know, Office 2020? We'll throw in some more features. If they didn't already have the market, I don't know that they would keep the market with that direction. Right? But everyone can spend more money making new features when you change. And because everyone is doing that one, if you change the focus onto the user, you have less direct uh, competitors. So then it gets to the, the, I guess, the key problem for the rest of the book is, well, then how do we make the users awesome, right? How do we make them the other thing, want to be badass? And um, I, I think, because I do a fair amount of uh, teaching and mentoring in various forms, and um, I, 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 it's a question I come across. I want people to want to advance themselves. And sometimes it's really hard to motivate people. So I think it's a question, like some people are just happy with barely getting by. How do you make someone, oh, you know, that, that, that kind of uh, trigger off of um, Andrew getting all excited, Org Mog and Emacs. He's able to do stuff. It excites him to do more stuff. That, that's the case where I guess the, the, the empowerness of the product kind of snowballs. But you can't get a lot of people to even look at it sometimes. So um, it's a real thing. All right, so what's in common here? Um, again, examples. Colors on my last video came out perfect here. I built this in less than two hours. They said I got the deal because of those charts in my spreadsheet. So I think here is all quote unquote badass users that are succeeding. I'm the product allowed them to succeed. The first guy in his video, the second one, whatever she did, I guess two hours is considered a small amount of time. And of course this guy, uh, you know, Big success, you know. I got the deal and you know, money. So, yes, results. The, the the deal there was they got results. Badass users are better users. You know, and this goes back to our time. The product has to be awesome because what they can do as a result of our product is what you need to focus on. So, sustained badass. I know. Sustained bestsellers help their users get badass results. So, now we've sort of thrown this term badass. Badass at what? And, and sometimes you have a case, what if you don't make something that a user can be badass at? Like popcorn. 
<laughs> I'm so badass at eating. I got fatter than anybody. I gained more weight than you in two weeks and one day. <laughs> I am now. I'm not just a badass. I'm a fat ass. So, you know, he's pulled out a tiny utility. So, sometimes hard to be like like I was trying to think of examples of myself where I could write a, a thing about a car but do, does it really make you a badass driver I mean sometimes in theory you know that Lamborghini is besides showing my wealth off um, you know is something there but so she called like oh it's a tiny utility so you got to look at what does your utility enable you know what can people do now that they couldn't do without your thing right what do they do better so what does it enable what could be done now that was not done at all um what are they not doing that they would do with it you know and and, and this is a sort of thing to, to hit the nerd thing it's like like i think andrew will agree you do stuff now with org mode because you can right. that you wouldn't yeah. have thought to do before yeah, I, I try out, like, when I'm learning R, I put all of it in, in org mode and I use session so that I can annotate what I'm doing. And right. it's super easy. And, like, and then I learn things like, oh, I can make screenshots and then I can just add that into my org, like my org document. And, and then I get to have this really nice, uh, very easy to, like, format output. Right. And, and, and so you start doing things that you didn't even think about if you were trying to do it and say word or you know something that's less capable or not even necessarily less capable. a lot of times and this is kind of like the whole Paul Graham blub thing it's like people don't do stuff because they don't know you could do it or they they don't know that you could do it easily like if we look at programming metaprogramming in Ruby is easy so people do it all the time metaprogramming in Java is really cumbersome so people don't do it Unless they've been doing Ruby and they go, oh, I could do this. It's harder in Java, but I can do this, so I will. And and I did meet uh, Howard Lewis Ship, who wrote this uh, framework called Tapestry, uh, J2E related framework, uh, back I don't know, RailsConf 2006 or something. And he did all this crazy stuff in Java, which was because he did a bunch of Rails stuff and said, oh, this is easy and gorgeous in Ruby, so I will take the effort to do it in Java so that it can be cool after he took all the incredibly difficult effort to do that. So, uh, but that's the kind of the example. What can you do that they, you're not doing at all? I give, if you could sell people on that, you could force them to, not force them, encourage them to be more badass users. All right, um, this is where my slides go off. The next uh, next seconds was another, a whole bunch of slides, another exercise. I didn't know if we were going to have enough time to do it. So I did not go ahead. And in truth, I got tired of cutting and pasting all those images. So, um, Ooh, so. Talking about Emacs, there's, um, there's a package called ROS, R-O-S. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that first? Uh, I have not. I will send it over to you. That's what I've been using to make screenshot dots, and it's really easy. Hmm. I had tried something that was supposed to allow me to drag them drop into Emacs, and I did not get that working. I don't think it was Ross, but I had tried something, and then, you know, I, you know, in between some things, I, I gave it like 10 minutes, and it didn't work, and I gave up. Um, I, I was not being a badass user there. And... Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, so anyone, any discussion? So I, I think I think what we're getting here is we start off with we're changing the look, of, not the look, where we're looking at. We're always looking product. How do we make the product better? Do we make better features? Blah 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 blah. And it's not that the product is not good, but the focus is empowering the user. And, and I and I would believe the book will go in the direction of. Like, uh, and this is consistent with me, and, and Diego probably remembers, because I know he used to read Kathy's blog, where she was trying to figure out, like, how do you reach these guys that are basically the app influencers, the guys that are the badass users, the guys that are tweeting how awesome so-and-so's product is making their life. And um, 
So part of it is making the product good so that you do all these enabling, these four bullets here, the last four bullets. And I think part of it is how do you reach out or find or publicize. And, and I think, so, um, like you always have those viral contests and, and, and whatever uh, people do, which try to bring attention to products. So I think you could play those games better if you can use those viral things to pull in your badass users. And, and I think like an example of that is probably like, oh, let's see what Robert has to say. See, everyone knows who texts me because of my text tones. Mm -hmm. You're very diligent about deciding those. Uh... Yes. Okay, here you go. Summary thought, good products bolster, bolster, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's shuddering at the sound I have for him. Um, Good products bolster user ego. Yes, some adopters just like being first adopters, but for major market beyond basic utility, a good product makes a user feel good about themselves. If it's too complicated, they feel dumb. If it gets nothing done, they don't feel successful. Everyone wants to feel badass. Instagram filters made ones made users feel one, more photogenic, and two, like good photographers, which is big growth. So there is a all right. I hope not to be the text reader in the future, but that's Rob's input there. So, um, yes, I think that's good. I think Instagram is is a good example. That's, that is kind of why they went. Those, those easy to do filters made your pictures look better and made you feel like you're a good photographer. Um, that being said, I almost never post Instagram. So I don't know what that says about me. Um, but yes, changing the direction. So I think that's the, the exact... Uh, Actually, a perfect, perfect example. All right, um, so I will pick up the rest of the prologue. My gut feeling was, given that what, it's 10.15, this is probably adequate uh, a time. Um, my recollection, I gotta paste a bunch of pictures and then I'm gonna do another exercise about uh, badass segmentation. Definitely read the book. Read the book to get the full example, uh, you know, all the pictures. And um, I don't know if we want to pre-look ahead to who might do the second chapter or the first half of the second chapter. Get any volunteers before? I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. And, and, and I'll let you know now, so many darn pictures, you better start. Start now so that by the time you're trained, you don't have to do any work. All right, so Alexis will pick up that one. I'll do the rest of the, the prologue next week. Hope you guys are liking it. G given that no one knew the trick question, no one read ahead besides me. I don't know. Where have the book? Uh, you know, I, I put I put the links out. Uh, whatever when we decided. I, I'll re I'll re put them out in free form. Remember, I asked about PDF versus Mobi versus EPUB. I put all three. All right, well, thank you for coming to Nested Loop. We'll see you guys in two weeks. And uh, read ahead so you know what to do for your exercise. Okay, enjoy. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.